Hello, welcome. Take a moment, read the problem, and then press play when you're ready to solve it with me. So these types of problems um, often involve the law of cosines, which is why I titled it this way. And the bearings have to do with uh, the heading that we're facing in navigation. So in this situation, what do we have? Let's go through it. We have a pilot. They set out from an airport, and they head in this direction, north 30 west, flying at a constant speed okay, of 305 miles per hour. And it says 45 minutes later, the pilot makes a course and speed correction and now heads in a different direction, okay, in north 50 west, north bearing 50 degrees west, and reduces her speed to 175 miles per hour. And she does that for a half an hour later, for half an hour, right? And then a half an hour later, what does she do? She makes an emergency landing. Find the distance between the airport and the final landing point. All right, now, uh, there's a lot of oversimplification in this problem. Let's just acknowledge that, first of all. We're not looking at the curvature of the Earth. We're not examining uh, the distance it takes to land the plane, right? We're oversimplifying this problem. And here's what I mean. Uh, we start off by saying that uh, the pilot, I'm going to draw my north, south, east, west, north, south, east, and west. And we're told that the pilot goes north bearing 30 degrees west. So I'm going to say that that's something like this. That 30 degrees is right there. That's the 30 degrees west of bearing north. And they're going at 305 miles per hour uh, for 45 minutes. All right. So we're assuming that they go at this. This is like the average speed, I suppose. They take constant speed. So obviously when a plane takes off, the speed varies. Here we're just ignoring all of that. And we're saying it's... 305 miles per hour times 45 minutes. So that's this distance right here. I'm going to write 305 miles per hour. I know the units, so I'm just going to say 305 times 0.75. That's 45 minutes, right? Three-fourths of an hour. That's 228.75. So this is 228.75. And then uh, there's a course correction, speed correction, and course correction. Okay, she heads north 50 west. So at this point here, looking at this again, north, south, east, and west, north, south, east, and west. And she's going north bearing 50 degrees west. I'm going to color code this with green now. So it's a little bit more of an angle, maybe like this. And this is the 50 degrees here. All right. And now she's going slower, 175 miles and she's going for a half an hour later. A half an hour, excuse me. And what's that? Well, it's 175 times one half. I'm just noticing down here, let me fix this. This should say 305 times 0.75 equals 228.75. Yeah. Now we're doing a half of 175. 175 times 0.5. I wrote L. No, that's 175 times 0.5 and 87.5. So now, going 80, we want to keep that green, 87.5 miles. These are distances, and this is a, a landing, right? Now, of course, a plane would have to maybe turn and land, or like maybe to this. We don't know anything about the exact direction of the landing. So we're ignoring that, and we're kind of assuming that this is the stopping point. Right. This is why we're not we're not giving any information about um, how long it takes to land, so we can kind of ignore that. And although this is not to scale, I want to make this a little bit better because this is only an 87.5, where this, this red length down here is 228. I'm going to try to make it a little bit better and say it's about here. So what are we doing? We're essentially finding the distance between the starting point and the ending point there. Right. And you can see this little triangle that is formed. And, you know, if I was using a compass, I probably should have, or a protractor, but I'm not sure how to do on this program, it would look much better. And I hope you're doing that. Now here, um, how we got this triangle, let's pretend we're zooming in. So I'm going to zoom in by redrawing this triangle here. Okay. So this is going to be my, the version where I label things, the copy of the triangle. We can do better than that. I'm going to get my, my line tool here. There we go. Okay. Now, let's label some points. Let's say we start off in an airport. That's, let's call it A. 
and it's called as um, let's call the second point B for airport B and the landing point C. So we have A and B and C. Now, we need to find some angles here. What am I going to do to find those angles? Well, I think a key observation is that, uh, let's look at this angle here. This 30 degree angle and this angle are equal because uh, this line and this line are parallel and those are alternate interior angles. And that gets us somewhere. And then I'm thinking, well, all right, well, I got that angle. Let me just find this this angle here in total, in total, this angle right here. So let's do that. We've got part of it. We've got 30. And I think oh, my diagram's terrible. Let me redraw it right here for you. It's a little bit better. So what we've got here is 30 degrees for this part. And then we have this is a right angle here is 90. So we track this as angle B. Oops, let's color code. Let's color code appropriately here so I can help you, not hurt you. Angle B is 30 degrees plus 90 degrees plus this little bit right here. And that's just 40 because we already have this 50 degree angle up here. So that's 40. So plus 40. And that's our angle C. That's going to be, I think, the key to unlocking this problem because you get 30 plus 90 plus 40. That's 160 degrees. That's at this whole angle right here. Right, that's angle B. And since we know this side length is 228.75 and this side length right here is 87.5, we can use the claw of cosines to find this side here, which we'll call B, because, it, because it's across from angle B. So the law of cosines from that perspective says that B squared equals A squared plus C squared minus 2AC times the cosine of angle B. And then it's just really a matter of plugging in here. So B is going to be the square root. Not, we don't want to solve for B squared. We want to what B equals of A squared. So what's that? A is going to be the green side up here. This 87.5 because that's the side across an angle A. 87.5 squared. And ultimately, it doesn't really matter in this case because we're only dealing with two numbers. But um, let's be consistent. C is the side across from angle C here. So that's 228.75 squared minus two times 87.5 times 228.75 times the cosine of angle B, which is 160 degrees. And we're taking the square root of all that, and that'll be the distance from the starting point A to C. And again, we're, we are oversimplifying quite a bit. So I'm gonna try to do it all in one shot and see if I can get it to work. Second square root, 87.5 squared plus 228.75. I'm going to use the square button this time, be a radical. Um, ooh, it's kind of a pun. Be a radical square, square root. Okay, hang in there, Sean. Minus 2 times 87.5 times 228.75. Close parentheses. Ooh, look at this. Some, for some reason, my graph, my calculator stopped putting things inside the square root. And now it's blanking out. Okay, this program doesn't like this. I'm going to do it in steps. 87.5 squared, boom, plus 228.75 squared, boom, minus 2 times 87.5 times 228.75 times... Let's go to mode, make sure we're in degrees. We are times the cosine of 160. Now, don't fret, right? 98,000 would not make sense. That's, that's B squared. We want to take the square root, so I do the power of 0.5. So that feels a little bit better, right? 312.409. And since this is asking us to round to the nearest tenth, I'll say B equals 312.4. There we go. All right, thank you, I hope this helped.